we were met at the railway station in Cleveland by the Myers, and I met Mr. and Mrs. Myers, Inez and Dave, and they took us to their house. They had three cars. The main car was a Cadillac, new Cadillac limousine, and my eyes opened wide. Everybody had mink coats on, and uh, our new life began. Dave spoke a little Yiddish, and that was near enough to German that we could sort of communicate. Inez was very anxious to please us, so she had made a coconut pie, and that didn't sell at all. Coconut was something we had never had, and if we never had it, we were never going to eat it. The year before, or month before, we were deported, I went with my uncle on a trip, a sales trip he did around the countryside, and we were in an ox cart. And I come to Cleveland, and I met in a Cadillac limousine. Now figure that. Now how are you going to, just how are you going to put that into one mind? In a matter of a year, you go from an ox cart into a Cadillac limousine. It's tough to do. So you can only imagine my, my thinking. I was wondering how long my good luck could last and whether it would last. We settled in at the Myers, and one evening shortly after, my brother and I were speaking in German at the dinner table, and he says, no, I don't want to hear any German. I want you to learn English as fast as you can. And he had us in total immersion, and he and Mrs. Myers, Inez, corrected everything we said so that our words would be unaccented. And it is the reason I speak reasonably unaccented English now. My sister Ruth had been put on a kinder transport in 1938. My sister was in, in England when it became obvious that not good things were happening. We had letters from my sister. We had letters from my parents who were still in Camp de Gers. And that lasted until September of 1942. And then they stopped. We asked our sister, wrote to her what happened, and she wouldn't reply on it. Twenty years later, I found out that on September of 1942, they were put on a transport number 27 for Auschwitz. And they and my aunt and uncle and everybody else went to, to Auschwitz and were never heard from again. How do you think people can respond, or should respond, to genocide and human rights today? How can we fight racism and anti-Semitism today? I don't think you can. I think racism is with us. It's inconceivable. It's inhuman. It's unreal. And, and, and genocide is, is a disease of humankind, and I don't think it'll ever go away. I don't think it's stoppable. <laughs>